The majority of the nasty comments that I get on YouTube are about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even if you Google who was the greatest man to walk this earth, it comes up with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well inshallah. Today I'm back with another reaction video and I am reacting to the amazing love story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let's get into it inshallah. Uh, a love story uh, which we could call the ultimate love story and it's of course in regards to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him and his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her. How did the Prophet ﷺ meet Khadija? How did this come about? As we had said in our last week's halaqa that the Prophet ﷺ was a shepherd. He was a shepherd and he would find people who owned flock and then he would take their flock and he would get some meager wages for this. Now it so happened that Khadija's older sister had a flock. She had a, uh, a herd of camels and her older sister hired the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to take their flock out and to uh, graze them outside of Mecca. Wow, and she I didn't hired know two that. people. We don't have the name of the other person. The Prophet and another young man. The two of them were hired to become shepherds for her large flock. After the Prophet had finished the grazing, they had to go back into town in order to collect their wages. You pay the wage, you wait, you pay the salary as soon as the wages are finished. So, the young man that was with the Prophet and at this age the Prophet is probably 23, 24 years old. The young man that was with him said, now that we're done, come let's go and ask our wages from uh, Khadija's sister. From Khadija's sister. Uh, according to some reports his name was Hala. Uh, so, let us go ask our wages from Khadija's sister. So, the Prophet said, why don't you go on my behalf because I am too shy to go because she's a woman. I'm too shy to go. And I have haya. I don't want to go ask her. Why don't you go on my behalf and you get both of our wages for us? So uh, the person came to Khadija's sister, and it so happened that Khadija was in her house at that time. And he asked for his wages. Khadija said, Where is Muhammad? He also has earned half of the wage. Where is Muhammad? So the man said, He was too shy to come and ask it from you. He was too shy to come and ask it from you. Wow, and so at this, Khadija's older sister said that I have not seen any man who is more shy and more noble and more honorable and more chaste in his interactions because she's interacting with him because she's a woman. So she knows he's lowering his gaze. He's acting in a very elegant manner. So she says, I have never seen any man more. And then she kept on praising the Prophet and uh, the narrator of this report says this was the first time Khadija heard of his name in such a manner and just like in, in any human being that when a person is praised in such a manner something entered her heart because he's being praised in such a noble manner and eventually in later on in the year Khadija had to send her own caravan to Syria remember we had said that there was the two journeys of Yemen and Syria and Khadija owned a lot of wealth. Let's pause here. Where did she get this wealth from? Uh, Khadija had been married twice up until that point in time. And her second husband was a wealthy merchant. And the two of them did not have any children. She had sons from the first marriage. But she didn't have sons from the second marriage. Now in Jahiliya, women did not inherit. That was the general rule. But in this marriage, this person did not leave any siblings and they didn't have any children. And so it became one of the rare opportunities that Khadija could inherit a lot of money. Otherwise, the general rule, women would not inherit money. So her second husband was a rich merchant and he didn't have any siblings. And so when he died, they didn't have any children. So then automatically it will go to Khadija. And so Khadija inherited a small fortune. And over the course of the next few years after her husband died, she kept on investing in that money. How would she invest? Just like we invest in our times, she would order some goods to be purchased in the time of Hajj and then send those goods to Syria 
purchase other goods from Syria, send them to Yemen, get other goods from Yemen, sell them in Makkah. This is what businessmen or businesswomen do. And her business flourished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her business and she eventually became a very wealthy woman. And she was known by titles in Makkah. Some of the folks of Makkah referred to her as... I had heard a little bit about Khadija and how she was a fantastic businesswoman, but I didn't know exactly what she did. So that's really interesting to find out what it was that she actually did. As uh, the princess of Mecca, Amira to Mecca, Amira to Quraysh, the princess of Quraysh. Some of them referred to her as Khadija al-Kubra, the great Khadija. So she was known by these different titles and she was very, very well respected amongst her people because not only just simply because of her wealth, wealth came later. She was primarily respected amongst her people because she was an intelligent, elegant um, woman of great ethics and morality. But because she's a woman, she cannot go herself to do it. And so every single time she has to hire a businessman. Now in those days, and this is still common in our times, but not as common. In those days, you wouldn't hire such a person by a wage. You wouldn't say, you go to Syria, I'll pay you a thousand dinars and uh, you do X, Y, Z. No, you would make it percentage profit. This is called mudaraba. You would give a percentage profit. And of course, because she's sending a man who's not related to her, who's not looking after her best interests, usually the person she chose would steal and would lie and would cheat and would not give the whole hisab, the whole actual uh, account. And therefore, she never managed to get the type of wealth that she deserved. Still, she managed to maintain her dignity and maintain a good amount of wealth, but never as much as she actually uh, deserved. And she felt that she had earned it. So when she heard this praise about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu she decided, why don't I choose this young man? Even though he was inexperienced when it comes to business, he had never ever gone on a business trip himself. He was a shepherd, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not somebody who was a businessman. But because of his honesty, she decided to overlook the lack of experience and also the lack of age. Generally, you would choose somebody in their 40s and their 50s, somebody who knows the caravan, the roots, everything. But she overlooked all of this because she wanted somebody honest. And subhanAllah, it is human nature that when a man is decent, is elegant with his interactions with a woman, then the rest of his nature is also good. That when a man treats a woman... It makes me feel so emotional hearing stories about our beloved Prophet. The majority of the nasty comments that I get on YouTube are about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When I read these comments about the Prophet that are simply not true, it really makes me sad. And I hope these people that have a bad kind of view of the Prophet watch this video and see what he was truly like. Even if you Google who was the greatest man to walk this earth, it comes up with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Please do your own research and look into what the Prophet did in this world and I'm sure you would take back all of your nasty comments because they're simply untrue. In this matter, this automatically he has uh, a characteristic that is noble and automatically Khadija felt this is a man I can trust and I can send my caravan with him. And so, uh, the Prophet, so, so Khadija sent a message to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through one of her servants saying that uh, the, the lady Khadija, now Khadija of course at this time was well known because she was the richest lady in Mecca. She was not the richest person in Mecca but she was the richest lady and uh, she is also uh, single and it was very rare for some, somebody to be single in that society and this is something even Islam carried into it. You hardly find any of the Sahaba single. They would always marry and it is something that they consider to be a part and parcel of living. You don't live a single life. Khadija, perhaps for whatever reason she had been married twice, she felt that she wasn't suitable for anybody, she wasn't interested in anybody. So she had closed this door and Ibn Ishaq and others, they mentioned that a number of men had tried to marry her because she was of noble lineage and she was a pure Qurashi and they liked this and because she was a wealthy woman and of course every man would want that wealth because if he married Khadija that wealth would become his according to Jahili law. And so a lot of men proposed but Khadija turned all of them down. Because she didn't want to share this wealth, she didn't feel anybody would treat her the way that she deserved. So, she sent a message to the Prophet Why don't you take charge of my caravan? The Prophet went to Abu Talib and said, Oh my uncle, Khadija has sent me such and such an offer. What do you think? And this shows that he was a very 
respectful young man that he didn't just impetuously say yes. He got permission even though he doesn't need permission. He's a young man, he's independent. He doesn't need to ask his uncle. But he got permission from his uncle. And he said, uncle, what do you think? And so uh, Khadija, uh, uh, Abu Talib basically said that, uh, oh, my nephew Khadija is well known to be the richest woman. And, you know, this is definitely much better than the job that you're doing now. It's you're going to get, inshallah, good sustenance. Allah has blessed you with this opportunity. Do not say no to her. And so she calls for a meeting with the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ goes to her and they basically sit down and discuss the business proposition. And they agree to the business terms that the Prophet ﷺ will go on her behalf as a partner. And so the Prophet ﷺ uh, said yes. And Khadija agreed that she would give half of the Prophet's to the Prophet system and she would keep half of the profits which is a very generous share but she felt that this was a man that if I give him a good incentive he would uh, inshallah ta'ala do a good uh, job and so the Prophet system accepted and Khadija sent one of her servants uh, along as well to him and the Prophet system took the caravan to the city of uh, Busra B-O-S-R-A not the Basra of uh, Iraq and Basra is a small town uh, outside of Damascus by at least uh, I think a hundred kilometers or so it's it's towards the way to Damascus but you don't haven't reached Damascus yet it's on the periphery of the Roman Empire and the Arabs would typically stop at Basra they wouldn't go to Damascus basically it's like coming to America you just stop right at the border let's say Texas right and then you just do your buying good and sell because you don't want to go all the way inside you're in the country and this is the most convenient location and Basra had a huge marketplace that was known just for this because it was at the periphery of uh, of the Arabs and the Nabataeans and other cultures of, of, of the north. Uh, Egyptians would also be able to go there, Yemenis, they would all be able to go. to So Basra historically, not from the Islamic sources, from the non-Muslim sources, Basra is well known to have been a town of uh, economic transactions. And to this day, there are ruins in Basra of the marketplace of Basra that goes back to 1,500 years before the time of the process. So uh, Khadija had sent her servant, uh, the name is given as Maysara generally, uh, sent, uh, and when Maysara came back, so the process went to Basra and then returned. He did not go to Damascus. When the Prophet came back, Maysara told Khadija of the uh, care and concern that the Prophet had shown of his honesty. Some reports even mentioned the miracle of the cloud on top of his head. And this is not something that is strange. If it happened, it happened, but there's no authentic reports. And as I pointed out, uh, that we have to be a little bit careful about these things before the prophecy, because the question arises that if people had seen them before the prophecy, this would have been a clear sign that he's going to be a prophet and th there are indications being given. Uh, nonetheless, it's something that has been narrated in some of the early books that there was always a cloud above the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made double or triple, yani the Arabic says adhaf, which means many times more, the prophet that anybody else had made before him. Now this is of course for two reasons. Firstly, because he's being honest, and secondly, because there's no question that whatever he does, Allah will bless it. There's no question about that. Yani we go back to when he was an infant and a baby, and Halima herself, her animal, her own breasts, everything was giving barakah. Just that the Prophet had entered their household, and their camel becomes faster, their, their she-goat be, be, uh, gives milk, etc., etc. And so there's no question that whatever the Prophet is doing is going to have extra blessings. So, the, the caravan came back with adhaf, adhaf, yani multiple prophets that Khadija had never experienced uh, before. Some narrations mention that they actually did a couple of more business deals because everybody's making money, why not? So they do a couple of more business deals and they grow very comfortable in doing business together. And it's, it's profitable for both. There's a lot of trust. There's no fear of any like uh, cheating going on in terms of business and so they continue doing business and eventually this is now uh, increasing the emotions that Khadija has and it is very clear and some of us might feel awkward or hesitant to say this but subhanallah firstly it's narrated in the earliest books secondly there's nothing wrong with feeling such emotions It's completely permissible she's a single lady the Prophet is uh, an eligible bachelor and 
uh, as, I have, as I say many times to my students when I teach classes, uh, falling in love is not haram. It's what you do with that love that can make it haram or halal. Falling in love is a natural emotion. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And Khadija, there's no question that emotions came to her. That first she's hearing the process and being praised so highly by her own sister. And then she sees the honesty and then she sees all, everything. Then Maysara comes and tells her everything that transpired. There's nothing wrong at all with her now having a desire to marry the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And SubhanAllah, what lady would not have desired to marry the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The details differ about how the, uh, the uh, proposal came about, but they all agree about one thing. Khadija was the one who instigated it. Khadija was the one who hinted at it or who kind of sort of arranged for the Prophet to, 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 to propose. And so Khadija, uh, in one version, uh, Khadija told uh, a friend or, or it says another servant of hers who was a, an elderly lady by the name of Nafisa, it is said, uh, that she expressed uh, she expressed an interest in marrying the Prophet And so Nafisa said, leave this to me, I will arrange it. And so she visited the Prophet and she was an elderly lady and she said that, O oh Muhammad again he's not a prophet at this time, O oh Muhammad why don't you get married? So the Prophet smiled and said, and who would marry me? Because I am the orphan, poor person of the Quraysh. And so uh, Nafisa said, what if Khadija wanted to marry you? What if Khadija? So she's not saying Khadija is sending me, but it's there, what if my master, what if my friend Khadija wanted to marry you? And the Prophet was quiet and then he said, why would she want me? Notice he didn't say, I'm not interested in her. He's wondering, why would she want me? So the message is given that he is interested because she didn't say, he didn't say, no, I'm not interested in her. Rather, he's thinking, why would she want somebody like me? Because he considered himself to be uh, uh, not somebody that was uh, worthwhile, but subhanAllah, he is Rasulullah and he was going to be Rasulullah and he is definitely uh, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen for uh, Khadija. So the Prophet says, I need to go and talk to my uncle about this. I need to go and consult with him. The Prophet is a man, all right? He's been working since the age of 14. He's been shepherding sheep and goats. He's been running around in the marketplace as a broker. He started off investing very, very small and buying little merchandise and selling it here and there. He's built himself up from scratch and he's supporting his uncle and helping his uncle out financially. So he's a man, don't get that mistaken. But at the same time, a man, being a man also means that he respects and recognizes the fact that my uncle both my parents were gone and my uncle raised me since the age of eight and looked after me like one of his own, cared for me more than he cared for his own children. You know, talk to him, consult with him, shoot off, get his advice, his counsel. He's got wisdom, he's got knowledge, he's got experience. And more than everything, he loves me. He loves me so much, like a child of his own. And so he goes to his uncle Abu Talib and he says, Ya Ammi, my dear beloved uncle, this proposal from Khadija has come to me. And Abu Talib again says, it's a great proposal. And so now he says, we need to make this official. And there the matter then went to stage two. I did know that Khadijah was the one that proposed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I did know that they did business together and I knew that she was a businesswoman. But I had no idea that he was such a shy man and that he had so much self-doubt. He didn't think he was worthy of marrying Khadija either. And I think that just shows you what type of man the beloved prophet was, peace be upon him. He was such a kind and gentle and hard-working man, working from such a young age. And I love the respect he has for everybody around him. And he keeps going to his uncle for advice about things when it was to do with working with Khadija, when it came to the marriage. He always looked for advice from his uncle, which is so, so lovely. One day, inshallah, I hope they were all lucky enough to meet him. It makes me feel so emotional when I think about it. He was the shy one when he was alive, but I'm sure we would all be the shy ones if we were ever to meet him, inshallah. And the next time that somebody feels the need to leave a nasty comment about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, please think again. Please think about what you're actually writing and do your research before you start slandering his name. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, give me a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you the next video, inshallah.